Hi, welcome to the August 2021 Q&A, Ask Us Anything. Have a whole list of things to talk to you about today, so we're gonna jump right in. Sounds Ready? Good. Sounds good, yeah. All right. So the first thing that I saw in the last month was, you maybe you've seen it, is that the avocado industry has started putting out marketing that says that they lower cholesterol and that, that, they, that they have the phyto, the highest phytosterols which is a cholesterol lowering, lowering thing found in plants, of, in any fruit. Now, the key point there is fruit. Right. Because um, they do, it's true about fruit, but other fruits don't have fat in them, whereas nuts and seeds that do have fat in them also have phytosterols. And if you compare them to nuts and seeds, avocados aren't even close. Like avocados have 70, and I don't know what that measurement is, 70 where nuts and seeds, one ounce of nuts and seeds has 300 to 400 phytosterols. So slightly more. Yeah, so it's not all plants, it's just fruit. So, interesting thing to get a, you yeah. know, to say, the way to twist it, it's, you know, how marketing works. It's a little unfortunate because we always expect to see that with the um, animal product industry. To, uh, well, the avocado industry has a lot of money now. They do, yeah. Remember yeah. that we saw, there was a documentary on Netflix about avocado. Oil. Right, I do remember that. Yeah. yeah. How even the cartels were getting involved in avocados. Mm -hmm. so it's How not surprising. That? Can you imagine that? Yeah. Cartels. Um, so phytosterols do lower, lower cholesterols, but the amounts that are tested in the lab that lower cholesterols, you would have to eat 20 avocados a day, which is a lot, as opposed to um, an ounce of Nuts or seeds. Right. So and we eat nuts every day. Every yeah, day. we do. It's true. And so, seeds, I guess, for that matter. And the studies they did were also replacement studies, which means that they were taking animal fat and swapping it out for avocados. And so it's not it's not to say if you add an avocado to your diet, it's gonna lower your cholesterol. If you replace animal fat with avocado, it's better for you. So it's kind of the same kind of study that the um, olive oil industry does when they say they're better than butter. So avocado's better than butter. Mm -hmm. But um, th those are just kind of the, I don't know. I saw the ad and I was like, wait a minute. So I started doing a little bit of digging. I thought I would share it with you in case you're seeing the ad that the avocado right. industry is saying that they lower right. cholesterol. Not necessarily. I'm, not, I'm also not necessarily saying that avocados are bad for No, you. I'm not saying they're bad. Definitely. They're just over embellishing their uh, benefits. Yeah, they're taking the study and kind of tweaking it. Right. So, it, it became marketing. Yeah, exactly. Um, oh, I have a note here. I wanted to share with you a pancake recipe I found. So I found a pancake recipe mm -hmm. previously, but I didn't share it with you because it had a, a lot of oil in it. And even though I was cutting the oil down in it, I felt like... It wasn't um, a recipe I wanted to share, but then I found a different one that doesn't have any oil in it, and that's the one we've been having lately. Right. Which is good. Which is really good. So here, here it is. I'm gonna just run it off to you real quick. It's from um, Tasty.com. It's one cup of flour, and I use half um, whole wheat flour and half bleached, unbleached. Unbleached what whole. You buy? It's not whole wheat. It's unbleached. Uh, Bread flour. Bread flour. Try to think about it. Yeah. So I do half and half organic because, you know, we try to eat wheat products organic. So I do half and half, but it's one cup flour, two tablespoons sugar. You can use any, you know, whatever sugar you like to use. One tablespoon baking powder. Now try to make sure that you get a baking powder that doesn't have aluminum in them or you may end up with an aluminum taste. You have to kind of look um, at the labeling. So get a baking powder without aluminum. Half teaspoon salt. One cup non-dairy milk. I use soy just because that's the kind of milk we have in the house, but you can use whatever kind of milk you want. Um, I did in a pinch one time use, uh, I only had like creamer. three quarters of a cup of milk, so I added some, what kind of creamer it's, do I have? Uh, oh. It's oat. oat well, it's actually by Silk, the company Silk. Is it? Are you yeah. sure? Yeah. Oh. So there's yeah. A, an oat creamer that I sometimes use uh, in coffee, and I had some of that, so I replaced some of the milk in, in, in this. Um, one tablespoon apple cider vinegar, one teaspoon vanilla. Now the way that I make it is I mix the dry ingredients and then I mix the wet ingredients separately and then I put them together. Um, and then sometimes I put chocolate chips in it because we like chocolate chips. We do like chocolate chips. Now of course chips. we get the vegan ones, but yes. that's not a health food. I'm not, mm. don't kid yourself, chocolate chips and yes. pancakes is not a health food. You know, food. I mean, I kind of consider pancakes to be the every once in a while treat. Yeah. You know, Although if I say 
pancakes, he always says yes. I say true. He never says no. I do not. Never says no to pancakes. Um, and then I just, I, I usually get, I use a half cup scoop and I get like five good size, you know, pancakes out of it. And you can choose how you want to cook it. I, I cook them you know, on my cast iron skillet, um, but you could cook them, you know, in a nonstick pan or you know, however you generally would cook pancakes. The one thing about this kind of pancake is that unlike traditional pancakes where you can just wait till they get the bubbles on the top and then turn them over, these aren't going to get that kind of bubbly look to them. The batter's kind of thicker than that. Um, so I, I always feel like I overcook them a little bit. They're like I'm still good. working yeah. on how hot does the skillet have to be? How long do I need to leave? Because for me, there's nothing worse than an undercooked pancake. Um, although them being a little bit too brown, I'm not a super fan of either, but I don't know. I, you never, don't care. I never thought they tasted bad. So. And Russ eats them with um, blueberries maple, and, maple and maple syrup, syrup on them. Um, I have made them for friends as a dessert with the chocolate chips in them. And then I make um, a Chim. blueberry cherry kind of compote that I put over the top of them. And that's been a real hit as far as like of creating a vegan dessert like a pancake. So wanted to share that with you because it's Good yummy. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, I also found an article about forever chemicals being used in parchment paper. Mm. So when I first saw it, I was like, oh no, parchment paper, because we use it. Like Russ uses it for his bread. I use it to freeze bananas. Um, I've been making um, oatmeal balls that are, there. it's oatmeal, flaxseed, chocolate chips, mm. peanut butter, and maple honey. syrup or That's honey, right. whichever you prefer. Um, and I just mix it together and freeze it, which is really good. You roll in balls, it's really good. But I use that, I use parchment paper for that. So we, and so I was like, okay, I gotta read this. So the forever chemicals that are in it are PFASs. That's not easy to say. And they're a stain resistant, grease resistant, water repellent type covering, I guess. Mm -hmm. Like, and you'll, you see it in popcorn bags, pizza boxes, fast food containers and wrappings on carpet, furniture, clothing, nonstick pans, dental floss, and in cosmetics. Mm. So it's in a lot of different things. Um, and this, this um, research, it wasn't really research, that's not a fair word. Um, investigation, that's a better word. This investigation was done by mamavation.com, so that's M-A-M-A-V-A-T-I-O-N.com. Um, definitely not a scientific thing. This is just where they go out and do, re do investigations and report back. And so what they found was that the tests they used could only detect 10 plus parts per million of this PFAS. And so they tested five brands. One was the Costco brand, which is what, what we, we used. Yeah. One was the Reynolds brand. There was an If You Care brand, um, a, fi a Finnish brand that... I I can't even say it, but it's from Finland, and then one called Cat Bite. And what they found was that the three weird ones that you've never heard of, if you care, the Finland brand and Cat Bite, all had less than 10 parts per million. Like that's all, that's the best they could tell you because that's as sensitive as their test was, less than 10 parts per million, or that's not fair, 10 parts per million or less. So it could be, it could be 10, nine, whatever. Um, the Reynolds one was 14 parts per million, so that's really not that big of a jump. I mean, I don't know. And then the Costco was 12. Right. So for me, I'm not throwing our parchment paper away for no. two parts per million. That's not going to be a thing. Right. Plus, I mean, you, it's in dental floss. I mean, it's in a lot of products that you basically use every single day. So. Well, and that's what their point was, is that they... And I posted the article on the community page, so if you actually want to read the article, it is posted on the community page. But they were saying, well, it's in everything, so anywhere you can avoid it, you definitely should. And I get that. And you know what? For some people, that is a thing, and that's fine. I just can't be that fanatical. And I'd also like to see the research around whether or not this particular chemical, for lack of a better way of calling it, is harmful. You know, I mean, because if it's one of those things where, you know, you'd have to eat a whole package of Costco parchment paper to have any kind of effect on you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, I yeah. mean, I don't know. So for us, we're going to continue to use Costco parchment paper. It's just, I have, you know, I have colleagues who are super fanatical about, you know, being clean and chemicals. And, and the, the, I just, that's one thing I haven't gotten into yet. And so I just wanted to share that with you because I saw the article and I wanted to share the data that they found. 
Um, another interesting thing, Gregor has changed his B12 recommendations mm. based on new data. Um, and he has several videos out on it, but I condensed it down to one sentence. The new data says 50 micrograms per day or 2,000 per week. Okay. So that's, he lowered it, I think. He lowered it. He lowered it, yeah, from 20. Mm. I just increased ours. Did you? I don't know. I just Hold take on, it. Let me see what I just take it when I, he sets it out. But yeah, he he was recommending twenty five hundred per week, and now he's saying two thousand per week is sufficient. So you say milligrams or micrograms? Micrograms. Okay, so we take a little bit more than that. We we were recently taking seventy five hundred. Oh, that's a lot. Yeah. But the thing is, you can't really OD on vitamin D no, B twelve you can't. if your body doesn't need it. It kind of just flushes it through. So basically, what it means you're just wasting money. Wasting money. Yeah. So it sounds like he's saying. That we could take one of these a week. That's what he's saying, yes. How do you feel about that? So, and this is a bilingual where you, know, you put it on your tongue and it dissolves. So what we read was the only way you can absorb B12 is that way. But you can't take right. it as Once a pill. Right, once it gets in your stomach, it gets killed. Right, right. And so my question is, out of this 2,500 micrograms, how much are we actually absorbing? Because even though I'm putting it on my tongue. Well, so, sorry, let me interrupt you. Okay. His thing, his whole thing was that you bo your body absorbs like one in extra number that you take. And so this, this number takes into account that your body doesn't absorb all of I it. I guess we're cutting back. Because, <laughs> yeah, so he, he, he his, and you could go to Dr. Gregor's site, which is nutritionfacts.org, and just type in B12 and, and his article, his um, videos will come up. There's three of them, and I think it's like they're 15 minutes worth of videos if you want to watch it. But he basically goes into all the science and how your body absorbs it and how it doesn't, and vegans versus vegetarians versus omnivores. Right. And just to refresh people's minds, I mean, we used to, as humans, get all our B12 by dirt, basically. Because your body can make it if you have the right bacteria. Right. And But since we sanitize everything these days... It's no longer able to do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can still get it through meat products because animals still eat dirt. I mean, that's when they're grazing, they're not filtering out the dirt. To, but you know, my brother, who's a veterinarian, says they do give B12 supplements is, to cattle because cattle are now fed so much grain that they're not right. actually in the. So dirt. I guess they're for grass fed. They're not. Well, even what does grass fed mean? I mean right. If you, if you actually physically that. see, the only thing they eat is grass. Yeah, so things can be, they can be grass finished. There's a lot yeah, of different things. There's a lot. Things, it's just manipulation left and right. The industry does give supplements to, to food animals for mm -hmm. B12. So anyway, wanted to share that with you because I saw it. thought you might be interested. I know that we've talked about B12 a lot. I personally don't care what diet you're on. I don't care how you eat. I don't take a B12 supplement. It's cheap. It's easy. Yeah. And it's, it's good for you. And the, the dangers of not having enough B12 are really, really bad. Much higher than the dangers of having too much. You can't really have too much. Yeah. You can just waste money. So we'll be cutting back on our money loss. All right. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Thank you. High Appreciate five. that. <laughs> That's good. All right. Um, I did get a question about um, inflammation signs and white blood counts. And I found some interesting um, data. So this is just data. It's not food related specifically, but white blood count, white blood, I can't talk, white blood cell count. There we go, can't say that. All right, so apparently normal white blood cell count in um, America is um, four to 10 billion per quart of blood. That's how they measure it, how many, like billions in quart of blood. That's normal, but it's not necessarily healthy. It's kind of like cholesterol, like high cholesterol numbers are normal, but that doesn't mean they're healthy. And so, in the U.S., if you get your white blood cell counts done, you might come back as normal, but as at four to ten. But high is actually associated with a lot of different diseases. There was heart disease and um, diabetes. Like he had a whole like I didn't even write them down because it was just such a long list of um, of diseases that are associated because it's inflammation, right? Your body puts in white blood cells for inflammation. So lower counts are going to be healthier. They are associated with longer life. And they are a good measure of just overall systemic health. So your general health, um, is it, your blood, white blood cell count is being lower is a good thing. Now, being obese means that your body makes more. Being obese uh, causes inflammation just across the board. So you're likely to have 2 billion um, per quart of blood more if you are obese. It's just that's the reality. Um, a higher count also leads to stiffer arteries, which goes back to the heart disease and the stroke and kind of thing. So exercise will reduce your white blood counts. And um, the article or the 
yeah, the article I found was by Gregor, and he said that um, it might be better, and he didn't come out and specifically say, oh, they should lower the, the standard from four to 10 billion to three to five, but he was like, maybe it should be three to nine, or maybe it should be three to five. So he was really kind of loosey-goosey about, well, what should it be? But suffice to say that if, you, if your white blood count is, you know, four, five, three parts per billion, you're in good shape, um, much better shape. If it's higher than that, it could be that you have chronic inflammation, uh, people with um, rheumatoid arthritis, obviously much higher. And if you are plant-based, 100% plant-based, and you have high uh, white blood cell count, it could be indication of an issue because you shouldn't. People who eat omnivore have higher because it's just the inflammation in their body, so that something to consider. Also, if you drink alcohol, that pushes your inflammation markers up as well. So something to share about that. How am I doing on time? Oh, we're zooming today. Good job. All right. So this is the last topic, but it's a long one and it's an annoying one. Fraud in the oil industry. Now. Now, I guess you don't mean like uh, Exxon Mobil. I don't. So we don't recommend that you take in oil, obviously. We, you know, it's not ideal for you, but I know that a lot of you are still that a little bit of oil here and there is something that is in your diet. So when I saw this um, information come through on my email, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna share it because if you're ingesting oil, and we do, we have oil in the house. We have some, um, a little bit of olive oil and some avocado oil that we keep in the house. Uh, I mean, I have to she do cast on my pot, cast iron so. pan, yeah. so I do season my cast iron pan with it. But apparently there's quite a bit of fraud in the industry, the oil industry. So I wrote down some stuff um, about that. There was a study done in 2020, so apparently during the pandemic, um, by UC Davis, and they found that avocado oil can be up to 100% soybean oil, safflower oil, or sunflower oil, that it's not actually avocado oil at all. And because of this, um, it may oxidize or go rancid far before its um, expiration date. So if, you, if your oil starts to smell strange, don't use it. It's obviously gone off. There's something wrong with it. It may not actually be um, avocado. avocado oil. Um, the other thing they said about olive oil, apparently the mafia in Italy is involved in olive oil. What is this with avocados and what? And olives? I don't know. There's money in it. That's uh, what apparently. it is. There's money in it. So the mafia is involved, and apparently... Back in the day, and this is obviously quite a while, I think it was said like the 1970s, there was a whole thing where a company sold oil, olive oil, and they filled tankers three quarters of the way with water and then put oil on the top. And obviously oil floats, so when it was tested, it was like, oh, this is olive oil. And it wasn't, it was mostly water. Now, of course, you are not gonna buy olive oil and not be able to tell that there's water. Like, that's not gonna be a thing. Mm -hmm. But apparently there's been fraud in the oil industry, in the food oil industry for a really, really long time. So what the mafia does is they will often blend lower quality oils and disguise them with colorings and fragrances so that they'll make it taste and feel and look like extra virgin mm -hmm. olive oil, but it's not. Um, in 2015, the Italian police seized 7,000 tons of fake Italian oil in just one raid. So apparently the Italian mafia is very into their right. fake olive yeah. oil. And I, and I wonder if that particular raid was planned. You know what I mean? Like, let us raid something so it looks like we're doing something and we won't touch your other stuff. We can't get into that. That's not what this show is about. I know. All right. In the U.S., there are no federal regulations for bottled oils and what their labels can or can't say. So basically, you're on your own. Good luck, unfortunately. California does have a law that anything that's labeled California olive oil must be made 100% from olives grown in California. And I know California is really strict about wine that way, too, that anything labeled California wine has to be made 100% from California grapes. You're not allowed to label something California wine and make make it from anything else. Apricots, whatever, only grapes. So, um, and then there was a, a sentence which I found to be less than helpful. Some studies have found cases of fraud in the U.S. food oil industry to be low. Some I studies have no found no idea what that means. Out of the 3,000 studies we looked at, two of them. Yeah. So it just says some studies. So um, there were some hints on how you can make sure that you get um, 
real oil. So real avocado oil should be green, not yellow. Apparently a lot of times um, fake avocado oil is yellow in color. It should be tinged to the green. Now, some of that's gonna depend upon how, like, how, how your eyes can distinguish between yellow and green, but it should appear green. You should check for harvested by and, or, and harvested and production dates on the bottle. The fresher it is, the better, yeah. obviously. Interestingly, I'm thinking about it. Used to all olive oil, all oil packaging used to be clear. Used to be. I know there's a lot of its colors now. Yeah, well, I'm getting to that. And I'll tell oh, you why. Oh, it's I'm colored. jumping the gun. I'm jumping the I'll gun. I'll tell you why the, the oil is stored in dark colors. So, um, avocado oil should have a and this is going to sound like I'm talking about wine, so bear with me. Grassy, buttery taste a bit like mushrooms. But if it's turning rancid, it may taste like Play-Doh. Okay, so if your oil tastes like Play-Doh, don't eat it. And if you know what Play-Doh tastes like, we need to have a conversation. Do you not know what Play-Doh tastes like? I do not I know would, what I would recognize the smell slash taste of Play-Doh. Well, there you go. Absolutely. Then. But I guess because you didn't grow up with small children. I did not. And I did. I grew up with small children. So yeah, absolutely, I know what Play-Doh tastes like. But you, you want it to be grassy, buttery, and a bit like mushrooms. I have no idea what that means, but there you have it. For olive oil, you want to look for seals and quality of origin. There are a few different ones. There's one out of Italy and there's one um, out of California. There's also a North American Olive Oil Association, which is the NAOOA Associative Group or whatever association. I can't say association when I say the A on the end because that's repetitive. But they have the red logo with the green olive branch. Um, it was also suggested that if you buy 100% cold pressed extra urgent olive oil that is 100% organic, there's substantially more regulation and inspection, so it will be way harder for them to commit fraud in that space than um, in, in other spaces. Um, but basically, buyer beware, and there's not really for you, any way for you to tell. Yeah, that's, another reason to go up oil. Yeah, that's really, really frustrating. So some other things they said, if the price point is too good to be true, if it's you know extra virgin cold pressed olive oil and it's super cheap, eh, yeah. probably an issue. Um, also pointed out that oil is a, is, can be good up to 18 months um, if it's stored properly. So from the pressing date, so not from the pick date or harvest date, from, from the pressing date, which it should have on the bottle. I don't even know. We have avocado oil. I should see if it has. Yeah, I feel like we've had it a lot longer than that. Oh, no, we haven't. We have no? Mm -hmm. No. This one's actually mostly full. So let's see what it says. So it says oil may solidify or become cloudy at low temperatures, store at room temperature, out of direct sunlight. So it says it has a lot number on it. It has a best buy date of April 2022. And it has an ID number. Ingredient olive oil says it's a product of Mexico. Um, grow them, we pick them, we bottle avocado, non-GMO, residue free from glyphosate. Pure 100%. Makes me want to take a sample and go get it tested. I know, right? So, I don't even know. Let me see if I can get a plate and see if I can tell what color this is. I have a white plate. Let's see what we can, if we can tell. This is supposed to be slightly green? This is supposed to be green. Yeah, it should be. Well, and also avocado oil is only that can do really high heat, isn't it? Right, but you know, this does smoke when I use it, which... Mm, which is interesting. I don't, I've always wondered a little bit about that. But let's just pour a little bit on the plate and see what we get. What do you think? Does it look yellow or does it look green? Well, now that I'm expecting green, I can say it does look a little green, but I don't know. I don't know either. I mean, I think it kind of looks pretty yellow. I mean, that, I, I would show it to you, but you have no way of telling because it's on camera. So, I don't know. That's the thing that's interesting to me is that it does smoke. And it's not supposed to? I'm not up to five, I mean, it says 500 degrees right on it. And so, I don't know, do you think that my cast iron pan will get higher, hotter than 500 degrees? A bit of research, it sounds like. I have to do some research on that, definitely. So, this one does not have um, a press date on it. And it doesn't have a pick date. It just has a best buy date on it. So, Which but, is up to the company to put on it. There's no real... Right. Rule about that. And, it and did. How about on the, nothing on the cap? How about underneath? No, not underneath the cap. No. Underneath the bottle. 
You want me to turn it over? Yeah. Well, you're brave. No, no. no nothing. Just the, just this lot number tap tagged on it here. So, um, it, and it says it should be packaged in dark glass, which this is. And it did say that the co the Costco brands have been tested to be what they say they are. We get this at Costco, but it's not a Costco brand. Hmm. So, is that the only one they sell? Yes, for avocado oil it is. Olive oil they they sell by the bazillions, yes. but this is the only avocado oil. And I got this one because it's it, it's healthier, and you can cook it high heat. Cause, mm. Because I want. Well, to, I mean, it has a picture of an avocado, so there you go. It must be fine. Um, it does say that good olive oil should have, and this again going to sound like wine, a fruity taste at the front of your mouth and a peppery taste at the back. So there you have. So it. there you have it about oil. I don't know. Yeah, I guess I can see a green tinge to it, a little bit. I need those little tester strips that you can test your oil to find out what it is. That would be nice, yeah, to see is this what kind of oil is this really? Because yeah, now I'm really interested if it's if it's actually not that we we like I said we don't eat a lot of it. I use it mostly to almost exclusively. Is there anything else I use? I can't it think for? of anything else. We just briefly for those pancakes that you found the other recipe. But other than that, I don't know. Yeah, I use pan. it mostly just to season my cast iron pan. So we're, but like I said, it does concern me that it smokes. That to me is weird. But I wonder if when you put it on the cast iron pan and it's, you know, it's exposed to air and whatever, then is it going rancid? Is that a thing? I said, I'm asking I'm, lots of questions about cast iron pans and we have which, no idea. I'm sure what she thought about. I had it right there. Here you go. That's the answer. Do you have anything else you want to add? Did you have anything come through that you felt? No, like I mean, I saw something. I didn't get a chance to look at it where uh, Gregory was talking about uh, how much education on nutrition the doctors have. Did you see that? I didn't. So, and I wanted to get it before this, but I didn't get a chance to. But we've already done the research on that. And, none. You know, they basically get none. They get, they get a, a courtesy. Oh, yeah, you should do something with nutrition. It's about the, end of the extent of your education there. So... If a doctor's giving you advice that sounds a little weird for nutrition, like I have a doctor tell me two glasses of wine every day is great, be skeptical. Yeah. You well, and it, it concerns me because, you know, people, what I don't like is that when I bring research and knowledge to people that, like, I've done this research, I can tell you, they argue with me, and that frustrates me. And they say, well, the doctor said, right. instead of going to a doctor and saying, respectfully, because, you know, you can be respectful, it's like, yeah, I'd love to read that research. Where did you get that information from? I'd like to look at it myself. Rather than it's net, it's marketing. Right. Yeah, but they argue with me, and I, I'm really to the point where I'm like, I don't want to argue with people about nutrition. I can tell you what the research says, and if you want to know, that's great. But if you don't, I'm not going to fight with you no. about it. I'm just not. You be you. Yep, exactly. Unfortunately, it's bad for insurance premiums, but. Anything else? I think that's it. All right. Well, then we should let these people go. Okay. So with that, we will say eat real food. Mostly, mostly plants. plants. Have a great night, guys. Have a good one. Bye.